Hi there. This is a GarageBand tutorial that will show you the basic layout of GarageBand and also show you how to create a simple song. Uh, first thing you need to do is to click on the GarageBand icon. If you can't find it on the main page, uh, you can search for it. If you don't have it on your iPad, you can download it for free on the Apple App Store. So I'm going to click on GarageBand. And the first thing that comes up is the instruments page. If you've done some songs before uh, this, all the songs will be in this GarageBand recent page and you can select them from there. But we're going to create a new project and you do that by clicking the top right plus icon and it brings you back to this instrument page. This is where we pick our first instrument that we're going to be playing in our song. I'm going to start with a guitar. So I'll go through the top control bar here. So on the top right, you've got a page icon, which brings you back to the GarageBand recent page that we were in before. You've also got the icon just to the right of that to go back to the instruments page. Some of the others we'll get to later, but the first thing we should do is pick the tempo, time signature, and key of this song we're gonna create. So the cogwheel in the top right hand corner is the settings icon and here you can change tempo, time signature and key signature. I'm just going to leave it to the defaults and go from there. All of the instruments look a lot like this. You have an option to change the sound of the guitar. So the acoustic sounds like this or you can change it to a hard rock, which sounds much more distorted, like this. But we're gonna keep it with the acoustic right now. We've got different ways of playing the guitar in GarageBand. The one that comes up first is the chord display, where you can either strum the chords, or even tap where it says their chord name. You can also go to notes and this brings up a graphic of a guitar and you can just play it right on the screen. You can also use the autoplay function which gives you predetermined strum patterns. So I'm gonna use autoplay four. We're actually going to start recording. To record, you can press the record button, which is the red circle up in the middle top, and it will give you a, count, a metronome count in. A metronome keeps you in time. That's the blue icon next to the volume slider. So we'll press record and we'll start our song. I'll stop it there and you can see an icon that came up in the top left hand corner which looks like a few bricks on top of each other. This is where we look at the tracks that we've just recorded. There's a few things you can do with that recording. We're just going to tap that recording and you can either move along the timeline or even shrink or expand the clip. I'm going to move the clip so it finishes at the fifth bar. I'm then going to tap on it again and you get all these options to cut, copy, delete, loop. We're going to loop this so it goes all the way to the end of bar 8. If you're confused at any point on any screen, just click on the top right hand corner on the question mark icon and this will bring up lots of information about what you can do on that page. If you want to have more bars in your song, just click the, the top right plus icon and you can put it to automatic. That means if you record past bar eight, it just will keep recording rather than looping back to the start again. Now we've got our guitar there. I'll just show you a little bit more of the controls at the top. You can undo what you last did just by using the undo button, which is the U-turn arrow up on the top. If you click and hold the undo button, you can redo what you just undid. You can also play using the play button. We want to get rid of the metronome while we're in playback, so I'll just touch that. Press the play button or the stop button to stop, 
and then you can just go to the beginning of the track using the go to beginning arrow next to the play button. So I'm just going to click the squares icon in the top left hand corner and we're just going to scroll over to drummer. Click that and what comes up is a automatic drummer that plays to your track, to your tempo and your mood. So if I click play, this is what it sounds like. Now I want a different type of drum so you can either change what drummer you have and they have descriptions of what they sound like. So if I go to retro rock, sounds a bit different. I'm going to go back to Darcy and there are presets on the side uh, which give you different types of drum patterns. I'm going to go with soul searching. Now from here you can just mess around. Uh, if you press play, you can either make the drum pattern more simple, more complex, louder, softer. You can just with mess with different things like changing from hi-hat to cymbals. Put in more fills. And you can add things like clapping, a shaker, or a tambourine. I'm going to add a shaker. Now if we go back to our tracks using the brick icon on the top left hand corner, you can see that's been added. And it's all playing together. I'm going to stop that and next we're going to put in a bass guitar. So using the squares icon in the top left hand corner, going to bass, tapping that and I'm actually going to go to notes. This is where I can play the bass guitar without any help of keys. So I'm just going to press record and we're going to play a little bass. And that's all I need because when I go back to the tracks, I'll click on that, take it down to the start of bar five, and I'll just loop that. So if we hear what we just did. On the left sidebar, you can also add more tracks by touching the plus icon on the bottom left. That'll bring you to the instrument page. Also on that left hand sidebar, I'm going to swipe from left to right on it. And it, that brings you to an area of GarageBand where you can mute, solo or mess around with the volume. So I'm just going to play that and I can solo just the drums. Mute the bass or take down the volume of the acoustic guitar. You can also tap on the instrument icon and you can get to where you can delete the track. I'm going to undo that. Next we'll go to loops and this is where pre-made music can be put straight into your project. Loops is the loop to loop icon in the top right hand corner. Here you can do many different things. You can search by name. You can filter by what instruments you want, by what genre you want it to be, by any descriptors. So for my song, I'm going to choose percussion and I want a cheerful percussion. If I go down, I'm going to choose tambourine 10 You can preview different ones if you just tap them. So I want tambourine 10, so what I'm going to do is to click and hold and then drag into my project. And we'll see how that sounds. So 
So also something you can do is record your own voice into GarageBand. And to do that, use the square icon or the plus button in the bottom left. Scroll over to audio recorder. And from here, you can record your own voice into your song. It's imperative that you use headphones with this because otherwise it will be recording the track that you've just recorded. So I'm going to press record. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. You can even pitch correct using this dial and add some more reverb. So we'll go back to the track view and we can see our vocals right there. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. So now we're done with our simple song. We're going to go back to the projects page. And to share it, we're going to touch and hold on our project. Click on the share icon. Click on song. I'm just going to leave the defaults, but you can change the audio quality and put in your information as an artist and use a different co cover image. Click on the share button on the top right and we can share this via airdrop, mail, whatever you'd like. Thank you for watching this GarageBand Basics tutorial.